Good morning, everybody. Here I am again, so excited. And I gotta tell you something. I'm excited because of the word, okay? This morning when I got up and I was having my coffee, I was feeling fat, lethargic, and then I read a comment by one of my sisters on Facebook, Sandy Hermeson Hewitt. And she said, my soul escaped like a bird out of the snare of the fowler. Now, when she said that, when I read that, I had a cavor moment. And that word cavor is the word in, I believe it's Isaiah 40, that says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, okay? That word wait is kavor, when, and it means to braid together, to intertwine. So when our thoughts are intertwined with God's thoughts, then our strength is renewed, but not in the sense like, I've got a fresh breath, but renew means to exchange. So I exchange my strength for God's strength, okay? And so this morning, I was in my strength, but when I read Sandy's comment, it caused my mind to be braided together with God's thoughts, and it lifted me up, and it gave me such, it was like, oh my goodness, it was like, I was having a superwoman moment, amen. And I said, you know what? A video's coming because you know, the Holy Spirit just brought to memory the scriptures. And now she was uh, quoting uh, Psalm 91.3 that says, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. And that word fowler is one who lays a snare. Well, we know who, who lays the snare, and that is the enemy. Amen. But my mind went to Proverbs 26, 2. It says, as a bird by wandering, as a swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. Now, let me read it from the Amplified. Like the sparrow in her wandering, like the swallow in her flying, so the causeless curse cannot alight. Listen, the, the, the curse cannot alight on our life. What is the curse? What is the curse of the law? Well, back in Genesis, the Lord said, because of what you've done, because you've eaten from this tree, from the sweat of your brow, you're going to eat bread all the days of your life. That was the curse of the false belief system that you've got to labor all your life and toil. Amen. And it just took them right out of the rest of God. But you see that the, the curse can't come when you know the truth. Amen. The scripture tells us that we've been delivered from the curse of the law. Amen. The scripture says in Romans 6, I believe, that you are, you are um, delivered. Let, oh, I got to look at it. Um, it says, uh, I think it's Romans 6. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It says in 614, for sin shall not. That is a definite. It in no way can sin have dominion over your life for you're not under the law but under grace you're not under the law or the belief system that you've got to do to be but you're under grace which is the divine influence of god upon your heart amen so i'm constantly being influenced by god's word that beulah you're great Beulah, I love you. Beulah, you are perfect and complete in me. You don't have to do a thing. Amen. So I'm delivered from the law of works through the truth. And um, in Proverbs chapter 1, 
Here I am back to my Bible again. I just love the word. Amen. It just causes me to soar like an eagle. Okay, Proverbs chapter 1. It says, Surely, this is this, I just relish this. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. You know, God's not talking about birds here. He's talking about people. But you know, he's using the analogy of a fowler. Let's say a little bird is sitting there on a tree stump and he's just enjoying the day, just tweeting away and the fowler comes and he's coming to catch birds and he doesn't know he's being observed and he lays a net there and then he goes away and he hides. Well, that bird saw what he was doing. You think that bird is so stupid he's gonna go jump in the net? No way. And that is how simple Christianity is when we know the truth. You know, the scripture says that uh, the devil roams around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's going to lay the net to trap unsuspecting souls. But when you're the bird sitting on the tree trunk watching what he's doing, it's just like, you've got to be kidding. Well, that's the way it is when you know the truth. And the clincher is in Matthew chapter 16, when Jesus said, who do men say that I the son of man am? And they said, you know, Elijah or Jeremiah, one of the prophets. He says, who do you say I am? That's what's important. It's not about what anybody else says. It's what you say. Who is Jesus to you? And Peter says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. The anointed one. And he said, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. For flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Listen, no man can know who Jesus is except the Father reveal it. And he says, and I say unto thee. Now, if you look at that in the original, he's saying, Peter, I'm saying right back to you. You're a piece of the rock. You are a piece of the same rock that I came out of. Amen. In Deuteronomy 32, 18, it says, uh, Thou hast forgotten the rock that you were hewn from. You've forgotten. You, you've been unmindful of the rock that bore you. And so, you see, it's imperative that our mind is full of the truth about the rock that bore us. We are children of God. And he says, upon this rock, upon this revelation, I'm going to build my church. I'm going to build out, I'm going to build the called out ones. That's the church, the ecclesia, the called out ones. We're called out of darkness through the truth of what Jesus came to proclaim. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Listen, when you have the truth of who you are, there is no fowler that can lay a net and ensnare you back into a works mentality. We have to abide in the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Let this word of Christ richly dwell in your heart. Oh my goodness. This has just made my day. And you know what? It was from a simple statement of my beloved sister that says my soul has escaped like a bird out of the snare of the fowler. You know, the scripture says, I think it's in Ecclesiastes, that iron sharpens iron. You know, when I, when I hear that, I think of my mother sharpening the knife to cut the Sunday roast. 
you know, it sharpens, you see. And as we, I love Facebook because it's just such a wonderful vehicle to share God's word. And that sister just blessed my heart this morning. Amen. And this message is a result of what she said. God bless you all. Have an awesome day. Fill up on the word of God. I'm getting ready to listen to Birdie. And then I'm going to have a double header. I'm going to Greg Henry. I'm going to get filled up on the word today. And I'm going to have a great day with my family. And God is just so awesome. And I am his offspring. How good is that? Amen. God bless you and have an absolutely fantastic day.